All right, wow. So let's get into this. So first I want to introduce Redux. It's an amazing feminist outlet for feminist news, woman-centered news from two prominent TERFs, Genevieve Gluck and Anna Slats. Um, you might recognize Anna Slats was, I think, formerly a journalist who was fired. She's from Doom Pill Pelegi. I think that's how you pronounce it on on Twitter, she has like just a lot of base tweets. And then Genevieve Gluck, who you might recognize, she's been on Whose Body Is It with Isabel talking about her uh, research in sissy porn. So they, I guess they teamed up and created this really awesome female-centric news outlet called Redux. So if you want like real feminist news that's the place to go so this headline is top trans medical association collaborated with the castration child abuse fetishist by genevieve gluck this was released may 17 2022 my mom know i'm a demon it ain't nothing she could do but pray for me this is really this is this is the slippery slope and it's not a fallacy this is the slippery slope you know they say it's a slippery slope fallacy it's not true oh you want to open one door no this is where we're headed it's like a frog who boils right if you take a frog and you throw them in boiling water they're gonna hop right out they feel that that hot immediate you know it burns their skin but if you take a frog in neutral room temperature lukewarm water and you slowly boil them well they'll boil to death because the incremental changes are so minute that they don't recognize from one degree to the other until they're boiling um and that's what we're doing we're boiling to death because we're making these incremental changes towards hell so it says the World Professional Association for Transgender Health, or WPATH. That's who sets like the international guidelines. So the International Medical Association, which sets guidelines for the medical transitioning of children, has been collaborating with participants of a fetish forum that hosts and produces fictional child pornography and extreme sadomasochistic content. On December 3rd, 2021, WPATH released draft guidelines, which included for the first time the category of eunuch. Here are the chapters, and in red, you see the new chapters that we have uh, decided to include in uh, the new standards of care. And um, I'm just going to go through these quickly, but the, the ones in red again are the new uh, chapters. Some we've just divided uh, some, some previous chapters into Too. And uh, so as a protected, quote, gender identity. So anybody who saw my two part series of Nullo, which featured uh, nullification surgeries, which is basically people who want to eradicate their sex. They're neither female nor male. They're just asexual. It is like an extreme body modification up until this point has been considered very very niche it's been predominantly um concentrated around uh middle-aged men but now i believe we're seeing some more cases of who are severe sufferers of child sexual abuse right who want to basically render themselves non-abusable by removing their genitalia and this, this is horrific that WPATH is rather than recognizing it as a symptom of you know a very hurt and harmed individual a very disturbed individual who needs is desperately seeking treatment and who is calling for help it's it, they're they're legitimizing it justifying it as a legitimate decision for one's body this is just this is insane was a part of a protected gender identity wpath has updated eighth edition of their standards of care soc which recommends medical treatment and services for those with a self-declared gender identity describes the relationship between quote eunuch identified people and other transgender people end quote so for those who don't know a eunuch is Traditionally throughout history, uh, eunuchs have been a class of men 
whose genitals were removed, um, who were castrated. And in China, they would cut their penis and their balls off, their penis and their testicles off. Uh, in Europe, in Italy, we would see it in the Roman Catholic Church where boys would be castrated for the purpose of being part of the castrati, which is so that they could sing at a very high pitch, maintain a high pitch so that their uh, voices would not change until the Pope outlawed it. So throughout history, you know, they've often been, the eunuchs were often used as a class of males who were eligible to serve females. So that would be the males who would be servants to the queen or to the concubines or the wives of some sort of male ruler, and this is to render him impotent so they wouldn't have to worry about cuckolding the male leader. Uh, but now we are bringing it back because, like Vanessa Voki said, history loves to repeat itself. It says the document states, quote, eunuch identified people may share with other gender diverse people a desire for reduction or elimination of masculine physical features, masculine genitals or genital functioning. Fucking Christ. It also goes on to claim that eunuch identified people may suffer from the same minority stress as other stigmatized groups. And refers extensively to research collect collected from a hardcore fetish site called the Eunuch Archives, a site that features child sex sexual exploitation fantasies centered around stopping little boys from going through puberty. The Eunuch Archives. Wow, I actually saw this. This is I was looking at this when I was doing my research for the Nullo two part series. That this is this this is legitimizing. We've been saying it. The P is going to be added to the LGBTQ acronym. This is where this is headed. This is the, they're finding every way in to get in. And this is the umbrella that they're going to hide. This is the Trojan horse. The Eunuch Archive began in late 1990s in collaboration with Body Modification Easing, BME, and was initially hosted on the same site. BME achieved some notoriety in the early 2000s for a viral video called Pain Olympics, which featured men mutilating their genitals on camera. Video where a guy cuts his wiener off and removes his balls with a knife and hatchet is one of the most requested videos for me to cover. The BME Pain Olympics. Some say it's fake, some say it's real and the guy died. And all this confusion is understandable. Because you see, there's actually several things that have been called the BME Pain Olympics throughout the years. And because there's so many different different stories and videos with different happenings, the truth about them has gotten pretty murky over the years. So for today's episode of Tales from the Internet, let's take a closer look at this CBT legend. Yeah, but we want to do this to children, right? That's totally legit. Prior to the official launch of the archive itself, members would congregate on a Usenet Formed by the same name, which advertised itself in a news group dedicated to sadomasochism, alt sex bondage, a discussion group credited with coining the acronym BDSM in 1991. In the news group alt unix dot questions, mem er, in the news group alt dot unix dot questions, members shared castration fantasies, offered services traded castration photos and videos, sought to connect with young men to feminize, asked, them, asked for advice on chemical castration and recommended doctors willing to perform surgeries without psychiatric evaluations. Huh, what does that sound like? Sounds exactly like r slash trans. An FAQ document published at the beginning of the site's development recommended several other torture and bondage pornography forums for users to share images and request, quote, cutters. So to clarify, cutters are people who would be willing to help you mutilate your genitals and to take on that sort of legal liability, which I'm sure there is some. But obviously, WPATH is looking to eliminate legal liability for helping uh, mentally unstable, porn-addicted males from mutilating their genitals. 
Although, you know, now that you say it like that, I don't know, it's the worst thing ever. But this is what's going to happen. It's going to be used. We're, what's evil about it is not so much that adult males can remove their genitals. Sure, go ahead. Have at it. Honestly, that <laughs> that doesn't bother me at all. What concerns me is that there are going to be mentally ill males who are coerced into this, who maybe will be diagnosed this, will maybe be forcibly given a treatment. They will be re considered mentally incapacitated to consent, and so consent will be given for them. Additionally, young children, of course, will be subjected to this by Munchausen by proxy women, uh, women who hate their sons, women who, and again, we know that there are mothers who will abuse their sons so as to get back at the father. We know that. That's why, you know, it is a trend as to why women will kill their children, which is to punish the father of the child for whatever reason. Maybe he left. So I can only imagine how this is going to be used to rain unspeakable pain and horror onto the lives of children, male children. It's not okay. Notably, Usenet forums were a target of the FBI's first investigations into internet-based pedophile rings as it provided a space for organizing and exchanging of child sexual abuse materials, including written pornography. One of the archives was established, excuse me, once the archives was established, many of the notable members moved over to it. One of the Unix archives most prominent participants is an unidentified site administrator who uses, uses the moniker Jesus. Jesus claims to have been involved in editing the most recent version of Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders of the DSM-5 issued by the American Psychiatric Association, APA, and WPATH's newest standards of care draft. And to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised because if you look, if you really get into WPATH, and actually that's what we're going to do. We're going to go through WPATH. We're going to go through all the recommendations because if you go through the recommendations, you actually wouldn't be surprised if some sociopath on some fringe body mutilation BDSM child pornography forum out in the deepest depths of the bizarre dark internet was actually the author of the WPATH recommendations because that's how insane some of them are. Uh, in 2010, the pseudonymous Jesus posted from the forum on how WPATH authorities had come to perceive the term, quote, gender identity disorder as outdated, saying he was in attendance at a 2009 meeting in Oslo, where there was consensus to implement the term, quote, gender dysphoria in the subsequent edition of Standards of Care. Quote, the draft for the next edition of Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the DSM-5, suggests, quote, gender, gender incongruence which I much prefer, he wrote, the body and the mind are out of sync with no mental illness implied. In 2016, Jesus claimed to have been specifically chosen to rewrite a portion of the standards of care by former WPATH president Eli Coleman, who pointed at me and announced that I was expected to provide input on Unix for the revision. And, and uh, that included the domination of the co-chairs, the chapter leads, and the working groups, which would also include uh, stakeholders. So these are the chapter leads, um, and they are responsible for each of the uh, chapters. Um, included in the um, review committee are 40 transgender and non-binary members. Um, and then we, will, we have a international advisory group uh, that will be looking at our beta version, and that will be available for everyone to review and comment on when we're ready for that. Um, our chapter members come from all over the world. Uh, we have about 120. All over the world. Let, let's break this map down a little bit, right? And of course, they try to make it ambiguous, make it look like, oh, it's mostly white Western countries. And then if you look in South America, you have... It looks like Brazil and Venezuela, areas that are already heavily plastic surgery focused, that are like destinations to plastic surgery. You look like it looks like there's Iran, which we know is a transgender desti surgery destination point, international destination point, and Thailand. 
you can see there's clearly Thailand, Japan, which is a huge place for pedophiles. It's like a meeting spot, meetup spot for pedophiles. We know a lot of pedophilia material originates in Japan. A lot of this sort of hentai, um, Lolita stuff originates in Japan. Obviously, New Zealand, Australia, um, U.S., Russia. So, the Arctic Circle. It, it tries to make it look like, oh, look, it's spread out. Not really. Like, oh, South Africa, the one white, you know, nation in Africa. So, it, it, no, it, it's not as diverse as it tries to make it look. This is a very exported Western ideology, as you can even tell, and is reaffirmed by this map. Now is our opportunity to help devise the standards of care that will be most helpful, right, Jesus? So th this is really like the, the just the hellscape that we're in. Do you understand? This is the dystopia hell that we're in. We're in cells from message boards are being recruited by our trusted medical institutions to give advice and to help write standards of care. We're in hell, guys. This is where we're at. In 2008, Jesus announced the upcoming revisions to the guidelines and invited collaboration for members of the community. In response to WPATH's most recently released draft standards of care December last year, one site member professed to being absolutely delighted and said he would gladly throw millions under the bus in order to secure, quote, a future where doctors must obey and have no right to demand reasons or withhold surgery and medication. Wow. Let's read that again. In response to WPAS newly released draft standards of care December last year, one site member professed to being, quote, absolutely delighted, end quote, and said he would, quote, gladly throw millions under the bus, end quote, in order to secure, quote, a future where doctors must obey and have no right to demand reasons or withhold surgery and medication. So basically, where doctors have no right to use their judgment or discretion and that they must just render whatever is demanded of them to perform whatever surgery is demanded of them. They are just to be puppets to just perform a task. In WPATH's draft standards of care, the Unic Archive's fiction archive is directly acknowledged and named Wow. Wow. Thank God for Genevieve. Thank God for women who are... Nobody else is going to pay attention to this if we don't. Nobody else is going to pay attention to this if we do not. Is directly acknowledged and named. But the document does not mention the large amount of stories within the archive that directly involve the sadistic sexual abuse of children. The stories primarily focus on the eroticization of child castration. In some, little boys request the procedures themselves and express gratitude to the adults who perform the operations. In others, children may be forcibly castrated under extreme duress. Some narratives contain violent, sexualized depictions of children with stunted puberty being raped by doctors written in, in sickening detail. Jesus Christ. Christ, God, you guys, th this is who is writing the standards of care. When, when the next time that somebody tells you, oh, well, doctors are all on board with the trans and doctors say, just remember that those so-called doctors, that those so-called standards of care are being written by sadistic people who run dark web internet forums. This is the hellscape we are in. Make no mistake. During, during our investigation, Redux was able to enter a password-protected area of the site within the Unic Archives community by completing a membership application. 
New members who apply for a registration are presented with a series of boxes to tick depending on their interest in joining the forum. Among options are transgender, nullification, forced castration, and female superiority slash dominance, a BDSM genre commonly referred to as femdom. Femdom. Sorry about my nose. Within the protected fiction archives, there were over 3,000 stories involving minors, including the explicit sexual abuse of children and minor with specifically curated tag that users could select to easily access stories specifically featuring children. Jesus Christ. The fictional pornography includes themes such as Nazi doctors castrating children, baby boys being fed milk with estrogen in order to be violently sex trafficked as adolescents. Jesus, God. No. No. That's what that's why they want to do this. That's why they want to transition kids. This is all like a big fetish coming. This is so sad. And pedophilic fantasies of children who have been castrated to halt their puberty, freezing them in a childlike state. A long-standing site contributor with connections to WPATH is Dr. Christian Hildall Willett. Doctor, this is a doctor, this is somebody, oh God, who, according to his Facebook profile, studied medical sciences at Ohio State University. Willette, Willette uses the moniker Christoph on the forum alongside an avatar of a nun with a photograph of his face superimposed, hiking up her habit to reveal lingerie and a pink chainsaw. Jesus. In June 2009, Willette was invited to w WPATH to speak on, quote, the development of standards of care for individuals with a male to eunuch gender identity disorder. At a conference in Oslo in May 2010, the contents of Willette's Oslo lecture were published in the International Journal of Transgenderism and academic sources surveys conducted with the participants participation of members of the eunuch archives quote a large number of men with gender dysphoria who desire to be emasculated do not fit the classical pattern of male to female transsexualism reads the abstract they loathe their manhood but do not identify as nor wish to be female instead they seek castration to become something outside the binary sexes do you guys see how all along this has been laying the groundwork for these extreme fetishistic outlier and they they said oh no that wouldn't happen and oh no you just want to prevent trans people this is what's happening there are reasons why there are adult men pushing for this so strongly There are two disturbing videos of Willette posted to his YouTube channel. In both, he is dressed in a nun's habit, holds a cigar, and shouts obscenities. In Sister Christa on cussing, on cussing, he role plays as though addressing an audience of children while reading out a list of swear words. In the other, Sister Christa's safe sex marriage, he waves around a condom while addressing children about the importance of prophylactics. Jesus Christ. Willette has made many repeated appeals for financial co appeals for financial contributions from forum members. No, probably because he went bankrupt. <laughs> oh shit, this guy's just scamming. According to a 2019 post by Willette, the website at that time received over 20 million hits per month and was run on seven, seven different servers, a situation that he was personally subsidizing. Donations were being accepted via PayPal and through a charitable educational corporation set up by Willette. Donors were instructed to send cash payments to a P.O. box in Minneapolis registered under the name Wareham Wyvern. Documents obtained by Redux reveal that Wareham Wyvern. I don't know the fuck. I got a lot of pronouncements. 
was dissolved by the state of Minnesota for a violation of the Nonprofit Corporation Act, which asserts that the organization's activities may not be for personal gain. For nearly two decades, the Utica Archive has hosted an annual, quote, meeting of the members. The event is held in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Willette's area of residence, and is co-hosted by Willette and the pseudonymous Jesus. Uh, Minneapolis is also where WPATH's headquarters were based for years. Interesting. Interesting. As well as the city where former WPATH president Eli Coleman currently lives and works. Coleman served as a lead chair overseeing the most recent updates of the WPATH standards of care. In 2008, a group of researchers from Canada and California collaborated on a research project on the topic of male castration fetish and publicized their findings in a paper titled A Passion for Castration, characterizing men who are fascinated with castration but have not been castrated. These are the men who are creating the standards of care that are influencing everything down to children's pediatricians. My pediatrician, who I've trusted for years, the same pediatrician that I went to as a child, my children now go to, came in wearing a lanyard with the LGBTQ plus flag. They wouldn't have done that a few years ago. That is brand new. This is a trickle down. And it's starting from these nefarious, dark spaces. I know. People there, listen. I literally dated somebody who is now a physician. Sorry, my cats are fighting in the background. You know, we, we like to think of these people as these pure, honorable, principled people, but they're not. A lot of times they're really, really normal, you know, and they're they're these really type A hard workers. And this is what my, my ex-boyfriend used to say is that, you know, we work hard and we play harder. He said a lot of doctors in medical school did drugs. They were doing a lot of cocaine. Um, they were into like hookers. So a lot of it's about the glory. A lot of it's about the high achievement. A lot of them came from families that put a lot of pressure on them. And they are not these principled people that we we like to believe that they are. Not always. Um, God, let's see. Uh All right, so Minneapolis is also where WPATH's headquarters were based for years, as well as the city where former WPATH president Eli Coleman currently lives and works. Coleman served as a lead chair overseeing the most recent updates to the WPATH standards of care. I just said that. In 2008, a group of researchers from Canada and California collaborated on a research project on the topic of the male castration fetish. Oh, I just did that. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> According to the research, the majority, 52% of, quote, wannabes who fantasize about castration, whether chemical or surgical, selected sexual fantasy of their origin of interest in castration. Several respondents wrote about becoming sexually aroused when witnessing animal castration. What? Thank you, Genevieve Gluck. Thank you for your work. Thank you to the women who are exposing this. Women have always been the safeguarders of children. You can hate it. You can love it. You can reject it. But the fact of the matter is it is women who have always stood. Stood in the gap. For children. And we need to continue to stand in the gap. We. We are the ones who can protect them. We are. And I am grateful to every woman, whether you're a mother, whether you're not a mother, whether you never want to be a mother, if you still stand in the gap for children, this work is standing in the gap. Um, over 700 individuals responded to a survey shared to the Eunuch Archive describing their reasons for their ambition towards Eunuchdom. 
For some, castration was a very important first step towards the male-to-female transition, the study's authors noted. As male-to-female transsexuals, they sought to rid their bodies of unwanted testosterone, with or without supplemental estrogen, to further their transition. One respondent wrote for the desire of becoming it, a submissive guy without a sex drive. More common was the slave metaphor. As a slave, it would allow greater focus on serving the pleasure of the master.